Well, thanks for joining us. I have Lauren Weiss on the summit and I appreciate your time. For those of you who don't know Lauren, she is a, a ketogenic specialist. You're certified uh, in that approach um, as a, a certified, is it nutrition specialist? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you're also a behavioral um, science. You have a, a doctorate PhD degree from Columbia University in behavioral nutrition. So I'm really excited to dive into uh, different topics about nutrition, ketogenic diets, and inflammation, and how they can help people with pain and with injuries. Thank you for having me. So Lauren, tell us a little bit more about your background, uh, about how you chose keto to specialize mm -hmm. in. Yeah, so my PhD is in behavioral nutrition. And then my PhD dissertation work was all about inflammation. So I did a lot of research on omega-3 fatty acids, which we know are anti-inflammatory. And some of my other research was on omega-6 fatty acids, which are inflammatory. And I published a lot of research on the benefits of having more of the anti-inflammatory foods on a few different outcomes, such as Alzheimer's disease, osteoporosis. And then my postdoc work was at Rady Children's Hospital uh, in San Diego, and I I continued on with the inflammatory research there, looking at the effect of some of these inflammatory foods on the risk of birth defects. So I've been in the inflammation world a long time and entering the ketogenic world was pretty much a no brainer because in my view, in my mind, a ketogenic lifestyle is the most powerful anti-inflammatory lifestyle that exists today. So a lot of people in have a, a negative viewpoint of keto because they think it's a fad diet. So what would you right. say to people that think that keto is a fad diet? Because it sounds like, I respect your opinion because you've actually done the research in this. Right, so a lot of diets, so I, I don't ever really use the word diet because for me, changing the way you eat really has to be a lifestyle. A diet sounds more short term and something maybe to achieve short term goals but if you go back to that previous lifestyle that you had before, your goals are gonna pretty much go away. Um, people really have to understand what the ketogenic quote diet is about. And a lot of people just don't understand it. They read a lot of misinformation in, on the internet and see a lot of misinformation in the media. So when I have clients that come to me, I really dive into the chemistry of carbohydrates, the chemistry of insulin, and blood sugar and really explain why the ketogenic lifestyle is so good for a multitude of conditions. Now, is the ketogenic lifestyle, like you said, not a diet, but it's more of a, it's more of a habit, it's a way of eating, and it's a way of living. So this way of living, this way of eating, is it specific for certain conditions, medical, medical diagnosis, or is it diagnoses, or is this for everybody? Uh, th this is for everybody with most chronic conditions uh, known to man today. I do make some little adjustments depending on if there are certain conditions or based on people's goals. But for the most part, the ketogenic lifestyle is so uh, powerful and so amazing in terms of reversing a lot of conditions and preventing a lot of conditions in the future. So, so having this lifestyle, being in a state of ketosis, which happens when we eat this certain way on, on the ketogenic diet, it really helps with so, at so many different levels in terms of making our body healthier, making, improving our metabolic health, which ultimately is the goal of the ketogenic lifestyle. So if someone's dealing with a, a metabolic condition, um, there's a few different ones that we can talk about. If, you know, for this summit, I'm helping people mainly with pain and with inflammation. So how does the ketogenic diet specifically help with inflammation? Because we know that people who experience chronic pain do have a lot of comorbidities and they often have elevated levels of systemic inflammation. Right, so I would say 100% of the clients that come to me and about 90% of the American population has some kind of chronic inflammation. It happens from either being overweight, it happens from the foods that are in our food supply and a lot of the foods that we're eating. So processed carbohydrates create inflammation. Sugar creates inflammation. Processed seed oils create inflammation. And that really is the root of the American Western diet right now. So it's very hard 
to not have inflammation in our current situ situation unless you're really knowledgeable about where inflammation comes from. Inflammation also comes from the, the visceral fat, the fat that is really deep down near our organs, that the visceral fat is really a reservoir for some of these inflammatory cells. So if you're eating poorly and you're a little overweight around the middle, you, there's no doubt that you have this chronic inflammation. And because keto is a lifestyle that incorporates a reduction in carbs, a reduction in, proce in processed carbohydrates, especially in sugar, uh, we also incorporate some other, um, some other behaviors such as intermittent fasting that helps get rid of that visceral fat. Ke the ketogenic diet for some reason helps really melt that visceral fat away. So you're really hitting inflammation from so many different angles. And that's why it's such a powerful lifestyle and really is the only thing I know of that really can reduce inflammation um, to a level and, and get your metabolic health back, back in order. You mentioned that visceral fat is often associated with inflammation. And I'm curious, and I know people listening to this might be curious about some of the signs of inflammation, of not just uh, in inflammation from an injury. We know there's the five cardinal signs like red, hot, warm, swollen. That's what you can get when you have uh, an injury. But if you have this chronic systemic inflammation, how do you know that you have it? Are you, mm -hmm. are you feeling fatigued? Are you bloated? Are you swollen? Um, and how could you measure this? Right, yeah, acute inflammation, we know, we can see, we can observe, but chronic inflammation is really silent. And a lot of people just aren't really in tune with their body. Sometimes they attribute it to aging. Oh, I'm just tired. Oh, I just, you know, I didn't work out today. But I, I have, when people come to see me, I have a list of signs or symptoms that they report to me. And I ask them, yeah, bloating, um, or how do you feel overall? Are you tired? Do you get headaches? And all of those are really signs of inflammation. And I guarantee most people in this world have inflammation and just don't know it. And inflammation is also tied to insulin resistance. So they kind of go hand in hand. So, so if someone is resistant to, to the effects of insulin, then they're going to be inflamed. And then that creates kind of a, a feedback back to more insulin resistance and back to more inflammation. So I can look at someone walking down the street and know if they have inflammation pretty much. Um, you know, that visceral fat is really a main sign of that. And just kind of the overall way they look, it, it, it's clear to me when someone has inflammation and someone doesn't. Got it. And I know there's some blood tests that you can do too. You can measure C-reactive proteins yes, and, you can. and you can get into um, some blood work as well. Right. But those, those just are not done routinely. Insulin levels are not done routinely. Insulin resistance is not done routinely. And CRP certainly is not done unless you specifically ask for that. So people just don't know. And a lot of people don't even know what inflammation is. They've heard of the term, but they don't really understand it because you can't see it. And the only way you can test for it really is a, is a blood test that most people don't ask for or even don't know about. So if someone wants to either explore a ketogenic lifestyle, how could they really get into this? I mean, should they approach their doctor? I mean, I know you might be, you might be working with their physicians, but there might be some pushback when they start to ask their primary care physician about a ketogenic diet or a lifestyle, right? And, or if they talk to their registered dietitian, you know, where could they get more information about this and learn how to adopt this sort of lifestyle? Right, there, there, there is a lot of kickback in the mainstream medical world right now about the ketogenic diet. And the, the physicians just are not educated enough and don't really understand what the lifestyle is about. And if you search the web and you're gonna get a lot of misinformation about it. Um, so there are a couple sites that, are, that, that have research-based information, but you really should work with a ketogenic nutritionist to really get educated. This is this is a lifestyle that you need a lot of education up front. I spend hours with my clients educating them on the lifestyle, explaining to them what this does to your body, what happens to your body when you start to reduce the carbohydrates. You start to get ketones in your body. What are these and what do they do for you and how do they affect your inflammation? So you really have to be educated from a very reliable source before you want to start in this lifestyle. And it has to be monitored. Yeah, it's real key to have it monitored because if you just start to do this yourself, you don't know what other kind of diseases that you might have that it, that could that it could affect. 
If you have high blood sugar, for example, what effect is it going to have on that? If you have a, a kidney problem or a liver issue, what effect is it going to have with those issues? So you mentioned uh, ketones. Can you describe a little bit more about what ketones are and also about some of the different types of ketogenic um, levels that people can get into? Right. So a ketone is an alternate fuel source that our, that our liver creates from fat. So the fat can either be from fat we eat or can actually, the goal when we're looking at weight loss is for that energy to contribute from our actual fat adipose tissue that we have in our body. So that really is the goal of the ketogenic diet. It is a high fat um, diet in the beginning, but as you want to lose weight, you really have to back up on the amount of fat and let your own fat contribute to the energy. So when you reduce carbohydrates, and you can't produce energy from glucose, which is basically sugar, the body has to find another way to produce energy. And the only other way they can produce energy is from fat. So the fat travels to the liver and through ketogenesis, which is the process of producing ketones, our body produces ketones. Our brain, our muscles, and our, and our heart can use ketones for energy. So once our body is producing ketones, and we can, we can monitor that, there's different ways to figure that out to know when we're in this state of ketosis. There's a range that we want to be in. It's called nutritional ketosis. Some of my clients think that eating 500 or 600 calories a day is fabulous, and they're in ketosis, but they're in a state of starvation ketosis. And that is not the goal of the ketogenic lifestyle. It's to be in a healthy place, with ketones that are gonna help with our goals, knowing that it's basically a sign that we are, that our fat cells are opening up and contributing to the energy. And we also reap all those anti-inflammatory benefits also of having those ketones in our blood. So it does have to be monitored. I have my clients monitor either with strips, urine strips or with a blood monitor, but it does need to be monitored. And I do have my clients report to me at least once a week what their ketone levels are to make sure they're not going too high because when they're high, we know we're, we're tapping into our muscle and that is not what we want to do. Yeah, and that makes sense that you want to be in that, in that optimal zone of ketosis. And so is it, is it possible to have too many ketones? Yes, you don't want to have too many. You don't want to have, be out of that range. You don't want to be in that starvation ketosis range. But your body is able to, to really keep in that nutritional ketosis range. Insulin kind of acts as a feedback mechanism to not allow your ketones to go too high. So if your insulin is working properly, I mean, even if you do have insulin resistance and you have some insulin, then there's a feedback to keep the ketones low. The one group population that we worry about, something called ketoacidosis, is in people with type 1 diabetes who don't have that feedback mechanism because they are not producing any insulin. Other than that, most of the population can regulate ketones, but I still like to keep an eye on them and make sure they're in that nutritional ketosis range and not getting higher. Does somebody enter ketosis right away? Is this something that happens in 24 hours? Does it take a month, two weeks? What's the time frame? It takes about four to seven days once you lower your carbohydrate intake to a level that will allow you to enter ketosis. Once you've been in ketosis for a while, then it's easier to get back in. So if I'm thrown, what we call thrown out of ketosis by accident or by choice, I can get back in within about 24 hours. But someone new to this, it takes about four to seven days. Your body, the last time most people were in ketosis, if they haven't been on a ketogenic diet or had fasted for a long period of time was at birth. So most people don't know how to use these ketones. So it takes a while for the body to figure out, well, you're not giving me any glucose anymore. I better figure out how to get energy or my body's not gonna survive. That period of time is about four to seven days. I'd say I, within five to six days, my clients who listen to me and who stay within their, what we call macros, their carbohydrates and their protein that they need to eat, will enter ketosis somewhere around the fifth day. And what kind of foods are people eating to get into ketosis? Is this just <laughs> not, about Not eating? a lot of carbohydrates. <laughs> not a lot of carbohydrates. And, and so is there a, a specific range that you would recommend for carbohydrate intake? So in order to get into ketosis, the rule of thumb is really around 25 grams of carbs. I use net carbs, which is 
the total amount of carbohydrate minus the fiber because our body doesn't absorb fiber. So, so on a ketogenic diet, we really use net carbs and you can't have any of those starchy carbs. You can't really eat any of those white carbs. The carbohydrate foods come from our, our vegetables, a little bit from our fruit. Berries are really the only keto friendly allowed fruit and they kind of creep in. There's a little bit in cheese. There's a little bit in avocado. There's a little bit in some of our foods. So if you were to eat one banana, that would be your entire day's worth of carbs. So you can see, you can, you can certainly have one, but then you can't eat any other carbs for the day and carbs really creep in. So the carbohydrates that you're eating, about 25 grams of net carbs, they really have to be from those nutrient dense, fiber rich foods. So you can get those nutrients in when you only have 25 grams of carbs that, that you're allotted. I mean, the average carbohydrate intake in America is about 300 grams. So people coming off a high carbohydrate diet or a normal Western diet, I have to ease them into keto. I'm not going to say, okay, today you ate 300 grams of carbs and tomorrow you're gonna eat 25. It doesn't really work that way. So I give them guidelines and steps, how to start removing grains, how to start adding fat and slowly ease them into keto. I don't think bread or pasta companies would like you very much. No, <laughs> definitely not. But there are keto companies now making these keto friendly products. I don't advocate them a lot because then they're replacing these, as I talked about, these nutrient dense whole foods. I really like people to eat as many whole foods as possible, but people who love bread and just can't give it up, we're lucky that we now have options. And there's so many different keto companies now coming on board and starting to produce these products because I, I think people know that keto is here to stay. I think people know keto is not a fad and people who don't want to give up the feeling or the texture of bread, we can satisfy that and still keep them in line with their goals. Yeah, and there's dessert companies as well. They can use almond flour and different substitutes, substitutes for sugar, and, and they're able to create some delicious desserts. There's one of them. We're both, we, we both live in San Diego. And so we know keto desserts company They're off, They mm -hmm. often go to our uh, low carb meetings and they have some, some good items there. So right. But I, I, I create limits on those things with, on those desserts with my clients as well. I mean, they're low carb, but they're not low calorie. And we, you still have to take calories into consideration if weight loss is one of your goals, right? You still have to be in a, in a negative caloric balance in order to lose weight. So we can certainly um, use those as treats once in a while, but I don't advocate those to be used on a daily basis. What happens to cravings? Because if we have to limit our intake drastically, if, if somebody's used to a 300 gram, a grams of carbohydrates per day, and then we're gonna re be restricting it to 25 grams of carbohydrates, it seems that it's gonna. It seems like it would almost be impossible for somebody that just loves loves bread or loves, right. bread. and that's often a, a barrier that somebody might have. So, is it do does do cravings change at all, and and how how could somebody transition into it? Cravings do change. the The longer you do not have carbohydrates and sugar, the easier it becomes. But that's when I have to use my background in behavioral nutrition and really talk about some of those factors that you know, to keep you motivated, to keep you strong, to keep you focused on your goals, because people will um, cave into their cravings. I see it every day. I, you know, I have a concierge style program. So my clients text me daily. I get texts, a, a lot of texts saying, oh, uh, you know, I, I'm craving carbohydrates. I accidentally had a donut or whatever it is. And I, I help them get back, get, get back on board and relapses are gonna happen. I, I don't expect everybody to start a ketogenic diet tomorrow and to never crave or eat a carbohydrate. So we learn from those situations. I work with them and say, okay, what caused you to have that situation? And if you're in a situation like that, make sure you have keto friendly foods available that you can go to that you feel will satisfy replacing some of those. So I work with my clients a lot on what other foods are satisfying for you. Right? Our, our whole, whole world for the last 50 years have been avoiding fat. We've been told that fat makes us fat. So all of a sudden now we get to eat brie cheese and we get to eat avocados and we get to eat a lot of olive oil and butter, things that we've avoided for a long time. So I emphasize that with my clients a lot. You can actually now really flavor your foods incredibly and taste all these flavors from the fats. We've been eating low fat and non-fat for, for a really long time. So really 
for, for you know, teaching them that they can now enjoy different foods that they couldn't enjoy before. And they understand because I explained to them what happens when they eat a carbohydrate. So really educating them. They now know what's going to happen to the body when they do eat it. And, and then explaining that other ways and other foods that you haven't been able to eat for a really long time that you can now enjoy. So it depends on the situation, but I always take the positive side and I always say, well, you can have this now. And I help them work through situations where they are having those cravings. And once you get into ketosis, your, your, your whole mindset changes. I thought I was going to be doing so much behavioral intervention with my clients. But fortunately for me, ketones help me with that process. Because once you have those ketones in your brain, your mindset changes, you have more energy, you're more focused, and people want more of that feeling. So that also helps them progress with the lifestyle as well. Yeah, that's interesting. You can probably have a whole podcast to discuss the behavioral parts of, of um, going after this lifestyle or the behavioral components of weight loss. And it's interesting, like what you said, that you're, there's a biological component to, to entering ketosis, that it actually changes your brain chemistry and can help you think better and think clearly. Because people might think that there might be, be just mindset barriers or behavioral obstacles. And sometimes there's a biological problem such as excessive inflammation in the brain that mm -hmm. can be clouding judgment and leading to these abnormal pathways getting reinforced in the brain as well. And, and not, not only just from, not only just your, uh, your, your perceptions that you've developed over time. So that's right. Uh, and I, and I work with my clients on an individual basis with whatever, you know, their issues are regarding the cravings and regarding the sugar and some relapse more often than others. And, but we work through it and we work through the situations I re-educate them on you're in ketosis and now you just had a bagel, you know, now you're no longer in ketosis. You got to work, you work hard to get back there. So I take a lot of different angles with my clients to, to create those in, um, in behavioral research. There are, there's a stages of change model or a social cognitive theory model. So I take parts of those models and incorporate that into my clients needs when I feel they need something like that. So there's something in the co social cognitive theory called perceived threat. So sometimes I gently, I will say, you know, I know what their condition is, you know, you got to really be careful because you're, you're not going to reverse that diabetes if you keep eating the carbohydrate. So I, I, I create this gentle perceived threat of what's going to happen if you don't make the change. And I incorporate that very nicely. And I'm not accusatory, but I certainly need to be the one to say, you know, if you don't stop that, you're going to have, you know, you're insulin resistant, you're going to have diabetes, next is going to be Alzheimer's. So I definitely educate them on um, prevention as they move forward and what's going to happen if you don't change your lifestyle. It's very similar to my physical therapy approach. In, in the physical therapy world, you have the biopsychosocial model. I also like to add the spiritual element to that as well for four main domains. And there's, there's different aspects of pain. And, and even and that's why I like to focus here on inflammation and, and specifically eating habits. Because if somebody is, has chronic systemic inflammation and they haven't recovered from an injury, there's, that could be one of the, the factors that needs to be addressed first. If somebody is so stressed, if somebody is so stressed out, not, uh, they're not eating well, they're not sleeping well, and I'm trying to help them recover from an injury, that may be the main thing that's holding them back from their goals and holding them back from their injury. And so a, for a lot of people, that's something that would make a big difference in their ability to recover from these injuries. And if they could uh, uh, reduce that or improve, reduce inflammation and improve the way that they're eating, get better sleep, reduce stress, then that allows me better opportunity to help somebody to recover from a persistent injury that may seem impossible to get better from, especially right. uh, sciatica, lower back pain, uh, chronic knee pain, people that are almost ready to get knee replacements. A lot of these issues, you know, inflammation is causing them to have that pain. And, but the actual biological process that's occurring in their body uh, could be holding them back from their recovery. I completely agree with that. And that's why there are different pillars also to the ketogenic lifestyle. It's just not about diet. I incorporate intermittent fasting when I can, and there's a lot of that that helps reduce inflammation. I do um, counseling on on better sleep and stress as well, and then of course, of course, I try to incorporate the high intensity training as part of, to round out that lifestyle as well, and then the behavioral component. So it's not just about the food that you put in your mouth. It really 
is trying to achieve this, what I call optimal metabolic health. And you want to, you want to get as metabolically healthy as possible. And especially now in the age of COVID, it's, it's become so important to get our metabolic health in order. And there are a lot of pillars and it's not just the diet. So I do do that with my clients and talk about all those other important aspects of health um, that will reduce insulin resistance and reduce inflammation. Do you have any stories that stand out at you uh, for some clients that you've worked with in the past that have used ketogenic lifestyle to overcome an injury or pain or uh, a metabolic disease? So I would say that 99% of my clients that come to me report joint pain. Um, so I know immediately that they're either insulin resistant or inflamed or both. They wouldn't really be coming to me if they hadn't gotten to that point where they know they don't feel good. I think um, some of my favorite clients are those that come to me for migraine. And the ketogenic lifestyle is now really being used to, um, to reduce migraine symptoms. And I have reversed migraines in a handful of clients. And those are my absolute favorite clients because seeing people have migraines daily to, I have clients that haven't had migraines for two or three months now. And, it's, and that to me is one of the most painful experiences that you can have. I've never had that before, but from what I understand, and for me being able to relieve that pain. So I educate them. I mean, from my perspective, migraine is a combination of insulin resistance in the brain and inflammation in the brain. And if, if that's what it is attributed to, and in, in a lot of the cases it is, it is, in some it is not, but if that's what it's attributed to and you go on a ketogenic diet, you're gonna to start to reverse some of those symptoms of migraine. The transition is not easy when all of a sudden your brain, which has been using glucose, is forced to use ketones. And it takes a while for the transition, but once there's a successful transition, migraine can be relieved with a ketogenic lifestyle. Yeah, that's huge. And I, I just can't imagine somebody dealing with a migraine on top of their uh, musculoskeletal pain, but a lot of people do because if they have inflammation, then there's often more than one problem that they're dealing with. And that's what makes it so difficult to deal with this, to deal with pain and deal with injuries. Right. And what I tell my clients is if you do have inflammation, it's eventually going to manifest itself somewhere. I have clients with uh, irritable bowel disease or um, inflammatory bowel disease or irritable bowel syndrome. I mean, it's going to, it's going to manifest itself in some organ. What organ that is, I don't know. It has to do maybe with a genetic predisposition, with a family history. I have clients with Alzheimer's who come to me, you know, with a history of Alzheimer's in their family. And so if you, if you continue to live the lifestyle you live, eating these processed carbs, carrying around that visceral fat, you are inflamed and you will not be able to live a long life without manifesting itself in some way. Well, Lauren, at the end of these interviews, I like to give you an opportunity to, to share your contact info if you want to do that, um, where people could learn more about you and about uh, and learn more about what you do. And also, if you uh, have a free gift that you would like to share with anybody or a free resource, um, feel free to do that now. Sure. So if you would like to learn more about what I do as a ketogenic nutritionist, my company is La Jolla Nutritional Health. I have a website, lajollanutritionalhealth.com. And my favorite, obviously, um, keto or low carb resource or website is Diet Doctor. All of the um, information on there is evidence-based and researched by MDs and people in the low carb world. So if you do wanna go out there and learn about it on your own, that is definitely the best place to go. And I would offer a gift of a free consultation for someone to learn more about the ketogenic lifestyle and what I do, my concierge consulting program. Excellent, really appreciate that. I know the listen listeners are gonna um, love that. So I'll put a link where they could we, I think we should raffle off that free, uh, free consultation. So we'll, we'll do a drawing where we select a winner and they can get a free consultation with you uh, to go over a, a plan, an action plan. That sounds wonderful. All right, great. Well, I appreciate your time today. Thanks for sharing your expertise and uh, be safe. Thank you for having me, you too.